sorry, buddy. I was <laughs> laughing. Hi. I never know when it starts. <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh, now I, I have coffee cake stuck in my throat. Cuts the moon. We just finished a webinar and we were showing everybody a whole bunch of different ways to ruffle and gather. And Rachel just jotted down some of the Johnson Ruffler questions that people had. So we just thought we would just like go over it all right now for the world um, on Facebook Live. So the Johnson Ruffling machine is made on the East Coast somewhere and comes in and out of availability. But there are places like eBay... Um, different sewing groups where you see them for sale. And sometimes the the gentleman's son is just making a few here and there. Um, it's also one of those things that like a lot of people bought and got frustrated with and didn't use. So we thought we would just thread it. One question somebody sent was, I don't even know which way the needle goes because you get handwritten instructions with this or at least you used to. This one is from like 1999 or 2000 and hasn't had to be serviced but you'll see it's missing some bolts and stuff um, so let's thread it and put the needle in and then talk about what will go wrong with it because um, they're a great machine um, <clears throat> do you want so, a lighter thread to show better or? I think it'll show on here when we're on the white when you're oh it. Um, yeah get me I'll grab it Rachel's gonna grab a bright thread get something bright Neon. While I sit here and cough. <laughs> it's um, dry. It's neon. And I've seen different sets of instructions come with it. It just kind of depends on the day you bought it. One thing that, that's just kind of like good knowledge is if the bobbin loads from the side on your needle, there's a long flat channel and then there's a cutout. The long flat channel faces the bobbin. So like here on a Bernina, there's only one way to put the needle in and the Bernina bobbin goes front to back. So the long channel, I really got something in my throat, but I'm going to make it through. The long channel faces the bobbin. So the, the needle is facing the bobbin on a front load machine. On a side load machine, the long channel faces to the side. So that means the Johnson ruffler is going to thread from the left to the right. <coughs> there we go. I'm good. I think it's a thread. That was a pretty good cough. So on some of these, the needle will... Oh, I got... <laughs> cough. You need some water. I have cough drops. There's a piece of thread in my throat. Them? We're going to make it through this. Your face is like... Tiny. I know, I know. So on some of these, on a few of these, the needle will only fit one way. On mine... You can put the needle in any direction you want. So I'm making sure the um, flat side is to the left. Sabina's giving you water. Oh, good. It sounds like I'm crying. <laughs> he loves the rough way. Let me have some water quick. <coughs> it's a thread. I can feel it. I can feel it. So I've got my long flat side facing the left. It sounds like I'm crying. I know. I <clears throat> love ruffling. Then the bobbin goes in pretty much like any other bobbin. Through the little nick and then through the toe. Hold the arm to feed it in. If your bobbin case has a hole in this little arm, don't put the thread through the hole. And that clicks in underneath. Then let's look at how the thread actually goes. <clears throat> While I continue to cough, there's a little there's a little notch here. I like to put it through the hole below the notch because it bounces out and gets caught in your netting. It's real emotional threading. This. Then it goes to the outside of the tension disc first. The outside of the tension disc through the spring. There's a little loop in the spring, and then it goes from the from the back to the front through the eye. <clears throat> And that's your thread take up. Then from there it goes to this little loop right there that's got a self thread. Then it goes to the loop above the needle. And then it goes left to right through the needle. And I've been struggling threading needles all day long. We've got a little bit of a breeze going on in the shop. 
Let me look. I need to look on this side. I still don't have the needle exactly facing the left, so I'm going to undo it and make sure that the long channel in the needle is completely to the left. And you see I wet the eye of the needle. That should help a little bit. There. And then just like any other machine, I'm gonna turn the wheel and lift up my bobbin thread. So I've got a pink bobbin and a neon top. Now let's kind of like look at the mechanic here of what's going on. There's this little plate. This little black plate is what's pushing the fabric towards the needle. So what should be happening is that plate gets a little bit behind the needle and then the needle should lower into the fabric. So my needle is now into the fabric before my plate jumps back. If that's not happening, there's two places you can start adjusting. So the plate needs to get to the needle a smidge beyond the needle, the needle into the fabric and then the plate or the pusher comes back. If that's not happening, the first easy place to adjust is back here on this bar, there's a spot for an, an Allen wrench. And what's funny is I've been in different shops with different Johnson rufflers. Some of these are metric and some of them are standard. So you might need two sets of Allen wrenches to figure it out. If you undo this little Allen wrench here, this little kind of nut zerk thing, undo it just a smidge because you don't want it to be loose. But loosen it a tiny bit, then you can figure out, so if you loosen this back here, so this arm connects to the Allen wrench. If you loosen that, um, uh, you can push the arm a little further forward to either make it make a little pleat or make it actually work. So before you push it forward though, you wanna rotate the, the wheel and get it as forward as it is so that you have some reference point for when you loosen it. Because if you just have it like in the middle of a stroke and loosen it, you won't really know whether you're doing what you should be doing. So you can loosen this bar and push it forward. The other place where you can like deal with that issue is on the little pusher here. On the pusher, there's two itty bitty screws and they're connected to a slight oval. So you can actually undo these screws a little bit and push that plate a smidge forward, or you can pull that plate a smidge backwards. So that's kind of how you can deal with this issue that that plate needs to get beyond the needle. <clears throat> the needle lowers to your plate or pinch, then the plate comes back. So you can move it forward by moving this whole arm. Another issue that people get after time that this is off-centered and the groove in the plate isn't lined up with the needle and it's just breaking needles. So you can loosen the back of this and then you can actually slide this whole arm back and forth to figure out um, to line the plate up. So there's that, right? So let's ruffle just a little tiny bit and then talk about some more stuff with this. And I, I know at one time you were able to buy more of these plates. One thing that happens over time with that little plate is, and let me just slide some netting underneath it, your plate will get a burr on it. So if you, get, if you break a bunch of needles, your little plate, what happens is it pushes the netting forward and then yanks the netting backward because there's a little burr underneath it. So what you can do is take that plate off, unscrew this, and take a really low grit sandpaper or an emery stone and oil and just rub the teeth of this little plate back and forth to get rid of the burr. Because if there's a burr, it's just gonna yank the netting out of place. So let me just ruffle a tiny little bit here. I use this little guide. Um, and I've got it way super tight stitched. So it's going pretty good. At Rick, would you find machine oil for me too? Somebody, somebody also wanted to know how they're unclear on oiling it. Um, so it's going pretty good. Oh, thanks, you had some right there. So let's look at, this is missing a sticker. There's a sticker that's usually on here that says plus or minus. What that does is see as I turn this back and forth, it's pushing that pusher forward or backwards. You want your pusher 
to be in its backmost position. You want this pusher closer to you so that you're getting more fabric pushed forward. So if I push that forward a little bit, it's hardly, it's not making a whole lot of ruffle. Let me get another piece of fabric here to ruffle. Um, so you wanna make sure that your pusher is this back as far as it will go. And some peoples that I've been with in different, different settings or that they brought to class, were able to get it much tighter by just undoing this little bit and pushing the, the little plate or the pusher forward there. Then, right, this is the other thing that a lot of people's happen. The little motor, I don't know if you can hear it, the little motor isn't strong enough to do what it's doing, so you're constantly having to like jump start it. And it goes better if you don't stop a lot. It will continue to go. So moving the position of the pusher is one way to get a tighter ruffle or gather or pleat, whatever you're calling it. But you can also change the stitch length. So having a long up on mine, and they're all a little different. Up on mine is a longer stitch length. So when I put it really long, it gathers a fair amount, but if I lower, if I continue to lower the stitch length, shorter stitches mean more gathers. So you'll find there's a point where you like can't go any shorter and it, it stops working. But you can really, you know, test the water. So that's kind of those basics. And talking about the motor, it did remind me of another thing. You'll see that, so this was going and not wanting to turn. Um, what you can do is the motor is on a, an oval, it's hooked to an oval also. So if you undo these two nuts, you can actually slide the motor further away from the machine, which tightens the belt. So you can tighten up your belt by moving the motor away from the machine. And now let's oil this sucker, because, um, when we were using this often, you want to oil it like nearly every single time you use it, which sounds like a lot, but it's a machine that's been retrofitted to do something it wasn't meant to do. So the greasier you can keep it, the better. When, when I oil it, I like to take out the bobbin in the bobbin case. I like to take off the needle. And there's some spots that are really straightforward that say oil. So there's like a set of holes up here we're gonna put a drop of oil in each of those holes. That hole, that hole, this hole. This is busted, but there's a hole down in there. I'm gonna put a little there. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is right on my needle bar, right on that thing that's bouncing up and down, I'm gonna load that with oil and let it run a little bit. Like you should be being splashed with oil is about the right amount. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is turn it all the way around. Some have this access panel, some don't. You can loosen this little access panel and then you just wanna look inside and see there's like a metal cam. Anywhere where metal is touching metal, you're gonna go in and put oil on those spots. It already sounds like a million times better. Um, so there's those places. Then the other thing that we would do at Omaha and Houston when we really relied on these is you would take the machine and set it upside down or get a helper. Look, I just lost the thing that holds the needle on. You hold it upside down and also check out what is, where is metal touching metal. So I just kind of hold it upside down or get a helper. Make sure you're not sewing your finger. And this is all mechanic. There's no electric anything in here. So in, oh, it sounds better every second. So anywhere, that, oh, that's a good spot. Anywhere where you can see, every time I put a drop of oil, it sounds better. Anywhere where you can see metal touching metal, it isn't gonna hurt a damn thing to oil. And then I'll even kind of like, that access panel that we did, I'll kind of try to like look down in there and put a couple drops. It almost sounds like a new machine. Um, so let's flip it back over. Don't step on the gas while you're flipping it over. And that is pretty much it. The bobbin winder on this one doesn't work anymore because we're missing a screw, but uh, a sewing machine guy could sort that out. And the other thing is 
don't, they've got this little guide in here set on some of them to make sure that you don't reverse the stitch. Make sure you don't reverse the stitch because like two stitches in reverse with this will just jack the whole thing up. Um, another place that needs some oil is where this bar isn't meant to originally go into the, the head of this machine. So I'm gonna flip it this direction and I'm also gonna put some oil right there where that bar has, let me see if I can still step on the gas, where that bar is moving. And then just put a paper towel underneath it and let it sit for a couple days. And it won't hurt a thing either. You can take this plate off to get to the feed dogs, but I'm gonna just put a little bit of oil right on top of the feed dogs and let it set and run out because they're also sliding against metal. There you go. And even when we were flipped upside down, it won't hurt. So we did the top of the needle bar. It won't hurt to do the underside of the needle bar so that you really, oh, that, that's a million times better. So that last drop of oil really, really helped things. So they're, they're, they're a great tool, but know that like out of the box or off of eBay or um, it's gonna take a little bit of futzing. But once you know kind of the different things you can futz with, you'll be ready to, Johnson Ruffle. We are not paid by the Johnson Ruffle company or represent them in any way. And you can send us messages too if you yeah. are struggling. Yeah, you know what it's yeah like, like sometimes people will send a note <laughs> saying my ruffler's doing this and we're able to say, oh, that's yeah. because this needs fixed. Yeah. Definitely. But if you have one of these and can get a hold of the Johnson people, they can send you a, a packet of extra of these little blades. Because, uh, you know, once that's ruined, you need to get another one. But a lot of metalsmith guys could reproduce that really quick. That's it. Sorry yeah. I was coffee at the beginning, but I feel great now. The water really helped. Happy Tuesday.